as the Federal University of Agriculture, Abeokuta, in Ogun State, has now been shut down for one week. The students say today's protest was meant to draw attention of the school authorities to recent attacks on the students' hostels. The police authorities, however, say 34 students have been arrested in connection with the protest. The violent protest over the alleged insensitivity of the management of the Federal University of Agriculture, Abiokuta, and the police over incessant attacks by hoodlums at the hostels left in its trail destruction of several vehicles and buildings. The student that was attacked, uh, it was macheted. macheted in the head. And we had this moment that the student died. Yeah, and we had this moment that the student died. And that, that was why students went on streets to, you know, to protest, just like to have a solidarity support for the students that died. During the riots, two policemen were said to have been injured, while a student was said to have been shot. But this was denied by the police. I was told one, two students were shot. One was shot in the head, and the other one uh, in the leg. So, and the one that was shot in the leg, I was told is now in the is now at FMC or in the hospital shower, but he's receiving treatment, and I guess he's responding to treatment. But the one that was shot in the head, we were told that one died instantly. We have been to, to the hospital, we have seen him, he's in a stable condition, nobody shot anybody. We used only tear gas to disperse, to disperse them, and that is the confessional way of dispersing the rioters group. Nobody, no single live ammunition was fired there, that I can assure you. About 34 people have been arrested in connection with this incident. However, all efforts to speak with the school authorities proved futile, as the school is already under lock and key. Hopefully, by the time the students resume from their mid-semester break, frayed nerves would have been calmed and normalcy would have returned to the school. What a story. Now, let's check in with my colleague, Yamisi Ikbae in Abuja. Yamisi. Thank you, Joma. A high court sitting at Oakiti, the Akiti state capital, has declined an ex parte order sought by the state government to restrain the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission from investigating the finances of the state. The presiding judge, Justice Cornelius Akintayo, ordered the applicant to put the defendants in the case on notice to prepare for the defence. He consequently adjourned the suit till August the 23rd when parties are expected to appear and argue the motion on notice. The motion was filed by the Attorney General and Commissioner for Justice, Owasheni Ajayi, to stop the anti-graft agency from investigating the accounts of the state government. In view of what the Lacassera company describes as misleading broadcasts about its Lacassera apple drink, the company has made moves to set the record straight. Today in Lagos, the executives of the Lacassera company opened its doors to the media, the National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, the Standards Organization of Nigeria and the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria. For 15 years, the Amuro Dauphin Axis of Lagos State has played host to the Lacassera Company. However, in recent times, the company has been linked with some bad press. With reports labeling its apple flavored drink as toxic. And today, the executives of the company are out to set the record straight. We have invited the members of the press as well as our uh, stakeholders in SON and AFNAC today to reassure them that the product quality of La Casera is beyond reproach. No matter what the malicious rumors are that some members of the public are hearing, yeah, we want to reassure them that this product has been and always will be yeah, produced with the highest quality and the highest quality and uh, uh, for all consumers in Nigeria to enjoy. And it's straight to business. The Lacassera crew takes the guests into the factory, showing each step from start to finish. Explanation means nothing without proof. 
and the managing director takes the lead by encouraging all to drink. So what is the verdict by the guests? As regards the rumors for, with La Casera, uh, the social media, we had our audits and then uh, we are satisfied there are no issues as a date with La Casera. They have nothing to hide that the members of the public should also take a look and see what they are doing. So that confirms that the certification we gave was not just a backdoor certification. The La Casera company may have been through some rough times with what they term smear campaign. But from this exhibition, the executives are determined to come out of it as winners. Federal lawmakers in the House of Representatives have disagreed with the Minister of State for Solid Minerals on the process that brought about the recent modified agreement signed by the federal government with Global Steel Holdings Limited for the Nigerian iron ore mining company Niamco Itakpe. And in, at an investigative hearing in the National Assembly, members of the House Committee on Privatization say stakeholders were not consulted prior to the signing of the agreement. Correspondent Linda Akibe reports. This is an investigative hearing organized by the House of Representatives Committee on Privatization and Commercialization. Federal lawmakers, the Minister of State on Solid Minerals and Concerned Nigerians are here to understand the details of the recent modified agreement signed by the federal government with Global Steel Holdings Limited for the Nigerian Iron Ore Mining Company, Itakwe, and Ajaokuta Steel Company Limited. On August 1, 2016, the Minister of Solid Minerals, Mr. Kayode Faini, signed a renegotiated concession agreement on behalf of the federal government with Global Steel Holdings Limited for the Nigerian Iron Ore Mining Company, Itakwe. But criticisms are following the agreement as the Bureau of Public Enterprises, BPE, says they were excluded from the renegotiation process, thereby making the agreement null and void this hearing is meant to get to the root of the matter. The Minister of State Solid Minerals speaks about the benefits of the modified concession agreement to Nigeria. The federal government has succeeded in, re in releasing the Ajakuta steel plant from arbitral encumbrances which have held it bound since 2008. Stakeholders then presented their position on this matter. They say they were neither involved nor consulted in the initial concession agreement. The original concession of Ajakuta Steel Company to um, Global Steel was not handled by the Bureau. It was not handled by BPE at all. Members of the committee are, however, dissatisfied with the process that brought about the concession agreement. Laudable as your, you know, the intention of this, you know, of a ministry is and the government is. Now, if everyone seated here, most of the, you know, the, the stakeholders seated here today, were not considered or carried along, you know, for you to come to this conclusion, uh, in whose interest exactly, sir? The members of the committee, however, says that going forward. The Ministry of Solid Minerals should work in conjunction with the Bureau for Public Enterprises, BPE, to find a way forward on the signed agreement in conformity with the law. Linda Akibi, Channels Television News. And that's all from us in Abuja. Back to you, Joma, in Lagos. The army has granted administrative bail to Mrs. Aisha Wakil and Mr. Ahmad Bouloury, two of the three people who made themselves available to the military authorities after being declared wanted. They were declared wanted after the recent release of a video by Boko Haram terrorists which shows the kidnapped Chibok schoolgirls. Military sources say bail was granted after they met some conditions, including submission of their international passports.